question of the week um the uh er, like i said earnestly speaking podcast he also has the take three wrestling podcast um and it's an interesting concept like concept it's three of them each of them bring a topic to the table they discuss it i think it's for f- like 15 minutes they actually set a timer uh, at least most weeks and um the one guy last week had brought up who um who was the most successful um winner of the king of the ring and they kind of did like a quick bracket uh where like they went around their room and uh and voted like as it as it went but i just kind of put the question out there who is the most successful wwe king of the ring of all time uh so i'll i'll start with you matt we'll go to matt mark and tim and then i'll give mine and then we'll go to some of the uh some of the listener responses but matt to you who is the uh most successful king of the ring of all time Jesus, I'm trying to think of like, <laughs> I know you guys really want me to say King Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, Shane McMahon never won King of the Rings. So I know this is hard for you. It is. Um, Cause to me, there's one answer there. No, there's not. It depends. It depends. Here's the here's the question. So, like, what? I mean, like, how are we judging? Like, yeah. Best? Like, is it success after being king, or is it? That's kind of how it, I take it. Okay, then there's. If that's the case, there's I mean, there still could be two. One. One. To me, there's one. Okay, so. It, I mean, it, to me, it's either Triple H or Stone Cold. Oh, then, well, then, then there is two, but it's not, it's not Stone Cold. No, what? See, to me, it's open and shut Stone Cold. Edge. Really? Bruh, he's like a ten-time world champion. He's a ten-time tag team champion, multiple-time Intercontinental champion, King of the Ring, Royal Rumble winner. Awesome. Stone Cold Steve Austin was never in the greatest wrestling match of all time. Well, I mean, that's true. That, that is that is an undebatable fact. It's edge. But to if me, like Austin's edge, the H. biggest superstar in the history of the of the company. Like I, I yeah, I feel like his run Steve though Austin's King of the Ring like like launched Steve Austin. Literally. Right, but but also Austin stopped being a thing in two thousand and three. Right, but do we get Austin 316 without... Like Obviously, it's... the answer is no, Jim. He won the <laughs> King of the Ring and then said Austin 316. Right, but I mean, like, I don't, I don't, I don't see another way that we get that, like, like I don't think he, he comes across at any point dropping the Austin 316 in a promo if he's not King of the Ring. Right, but still, I mean, to, to say best and then base it on success, like, Triple H had, like, 20 yeah. years of dominance after that pretty much yeah he he has like 14 title reigns he's he's had I, yeah it, it might be triple h then damn see it's for me uh, triple h and then edge then then stone cold yeah and then and like and, macho man yeah or brett See, I think Brett was already w- were I think like Brett made the King of the Ring something because Brett was already established. Well, Brett won two. He won one in ninety one and one in ninety three. His first WWE title was December ninety two. Right. I mean, how how established was Brock in O two when he won his? He wasn't at all. He was still a rookie monster. He didn't win his first title until he won his first title because he won King of the Ring. Right. So, so he he debuted April 20 or 2002, wins the King of the Ring by beating Rob Van Dam, then goes on to beat The Rock at SummerSlam and then wrestles until 2004 and then takes his ball and goes home, tries to play football. Uh, gets real punched in the face for a couple of years, 
Harry's and then, table and knocks and, out a couple kids. <laughs> yeah, and like gets diverticulitis and then comes back and like first match back decides he wants to catapult himself off a set of ring stairs over the top rope to get to John <laughs> Cena. And then he calms it down and realizes, hey, if I just slam people and I say suplex city, bitch, I'm going to be the most profitable I've ever been. Kobe. Um, Mark, do you want to do you want to weigh in? Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi there. <laughs> most successful. Uh, I was just making sure you were still ring. awake. Oh, yeah, I'm still awake. <laughs> I'm just showing here the uh, Kirby the Magnificent Fluffy Dog came in. Oh. Um, but the, uh, I, I was thinking Austin, but you guys make a good argument, but I still think I'm going to stick with Austin. Um, but I was also thinking people who actually embraced being the king. I hate to say it, but King Corbin's really embraced the the king. Well, I mean, King uh, Booker, Booker really did as well. Yeah. 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 King Booker. Um, Owen even Hart. As lousy as he was. Owen Hart, uh, King Mabel, as lousy as he was. <laughs> he really embraced that. Uh, the title of the king. Like but I would like put Bret Hart and uh, I'd put King. I would put Triple Owen H. Hart's King as like more successful, more important than 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 Brett's. Because like I think Brett was Brett was gold with or without the King of the Ring. Like Owen, yeah. that that, yeah, but, without, that. but without Brett, the King of the Ring was nothing. Fair, yeah. The King the King of the Ring was successful because of Brett Owen Hart as what we know him as I think was successful because of the King of the ring. Right. A couple of responses here. Nikki uh, says all hail King Booker. Yeah. Um, Ryan says edge. So he's with you on team edge. Uh, Charlie on Twitter said King Booker. Ryan had said not our Ryan, another Ryan um, had said Austin. There was a, there was a bunch of Austin's. There was a couple of triple H's though, um, which I hadn't, um, I hadn't ne- necessarily thought about. There was a uh, there was a Macho Man uh, in there as well. We did get a lot of response. A couple people had Brock. Uh, one or two, I think, had Owen. Um, Nick had 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 agreed with me. Since Stone Cold as it launches career into the stratosphere, and like, so I guess you know, and I, and I guess too, yeah, it does. It's kind of one of those open ended things of like, how do you define success? Um. And like you know, for me, I guess it was just that like Austin became the the biggest, arguably the biggest superstar in the history of the business. Um, you know, then, then you know, and we don't get that without him winning the King of the Ring. So, like in terms of like in ring success and and longevity stuff like that, yeah, obviously Austin's run was is not what Edge's was or Triple H's was. Um, or or anything like that. Uh, I'm, like, I'm looking through like who the people had to go through to win King of the Ring. Um, <laughs> Stone Cold was not. Wasn't uh, Murderer's Row? <laughs> Mark Marrow. He beat Jake Roberts at the finals. Yeah. Who did he beat between Mark Marrow and Jake? No one. No one. Mark Marrow a- was the semifinal. Jake Roberts was the final but round one was bob holly and then the quarterfinal was sabio vega and actually in looking at like the other people that we said would be towards the top that's probably the best one in terms of opponents beaten in terms of opponents beaten because edge had test perry saturn rhino and kurt angle well, I mean, I think beating angles is is pretty solid, but yeah, the rest of that lineup. Um, Triple H had to go through Crush, Ahmed Johnson, and Mankind. Okay. Brock went through Bubba Ray, Booker T, Test, and then RVD. Hmm. And then Owen went through Doink the Clown, Tatanka, One Two Three Kid, Razor Ramon. So, <laughs> and he and I think he needed help to beat Razor Ramon. I think night like I think that was the big shock of the Owen Hart victory was Jim Neidhart had come oh, down yep. and uh, oh, and attacked he went through Matt Hardy, Kurt Angle, and then Bobby Lashley at like the 
Bobby Lashley. So that's not a bad run. Bob. Uh, Ryan says here in the comments, I think it was such a huge deal for Edge uh, beating Kurt Angle at the time. No one expected it. If not for that, I don't think Edge would be nearly as successful. Um, Nikki said she picked Booker because he was the one who milked it for all it was worth. Um, he made his win look like it was the most important win of his career. About, uh, I mean, to this day, I, 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 I can you... go ahead, Mark. I was going to say Harley Race should be in there too. Now that I think about it, right? He was he the, won that... the King of the Ring tour, one of the early ones. I think I was the first one, I believe. Um, but to this day, I, I can. He may... When when you uh, talk about King Booker, I can still hear Charmel, all hail King Booker, just playing on a, a you know mm-hmm. on repeat in my head because like any time those like those the, the the promos, it was just like oh my god, and you know you made it made you hate him as King of the Ring, so it is definitely a memorable reign. Whether it's the best is is to me arguable. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved the topic and, and I wish and now, I mean, obviously King Corbin right now is is, I think, taking the, the victory and uh, with like the Game of Thrones attire um, is, is pretty fantastic. But like, I wish I do wish it would like it would mean more like even when they brought it back, like it, it doesn't feel like it it really means a whole lot that he won King of the Ring. Like, I mean, I love that he did, and he still uses the gimmick, but, like, th- did it really lead to anything? Like, I wish when they did a King of the Ring, I feel like I like I wish it would it would lead to, um, you know, a, a pick a pick a title to to um, compete for, you know, what and you know maybe Corbin goes, well, I'm going to go to NXT and compete for the NXT Championship, like. Have some have some fun with it. Like I just wish there was a little bit more to a King of the Ring victory. 